This tutorial will give you some practice with drawing Lewis structures for covalently bonded molecules and ions. The first one asks us to draw a correct Lewis structure for SCl2. First, we need to determine the total number of valence electrons that will be represented as dots in our Lewis dot structure. <coughs> Sulfur has six, being in group 6A of the periodic table, and two chlorine atoms each contribute seven electrons for a total of 20 electrons. Next, we'll draw a skeletal structure with the first atom listed, the one in the least number, uh, the sulfur, as the central atom. And this is a good general rule, except for hydrogen, that can never be a central atom. Notice also that when we draw the skeleton structure, we've connected the atoms with single bonds. A, a dashed line represents a single pair of electrons shared between. Those two bonds have used up four of our total of 20 electrons. So the next thing we'll do is put electrons around the outer atoms, the chlorine atoms, in order to satisfy the octet rule. And so that shows the two bonds and the lone pairs totaling to about 16 electrons. Since we still have four more electrons of the 20 that we had to start with, we'll place those four electrons on the central atom. And at this point, all of the atoms have an octet of electrons surrounding them, so there's no need to use double or triple bonds. So this is the final Lewis structure for SCl2. To check your answer, verify that you have the correct number of electrons, the right number of dots, 20 in this case, and that all three of the atoms have an octet of electrons and thereby satisfy the octet rule. The next one is to draw a Lewis structure for HCN. And so if you correctly total up the number of valence electrons, you end up with 10 valence electrons total. We've listed the atoms in the same order in which they're shown in the given formula. Notice that hydrogen can never be a central atom, so we place the carbon in the center. And we've connected the other atoms to that central carbon atom with a single bond, a pair of electrons. So there are four electrons used. And then we'll add electrons around the outer atoms. Remember, though, that hydrogen can never, ever, no exceptions to that, never have more than two electrons total, which is one bond. So never, ever put lone pairs of electrons on a hydrogen atom. So all the remaining electrons would go on the, the outer nitrogen atom in this case. At that point, we've used all of the 10 valence electrons. So we check for octets, and we see that carbon does not have an octet at this point. By sharing electrons from nitrogen and making multiple bonds, we can try to get an octet for all the atoms, including the carbon atom. So let's first try a double bond. We'll move a lone pair of electrons from nitrogen into a bonding pair to make a double bond. But when we, we do that, we see that carbon still has fewer than eight electrons. It only has six electrons associated with it now. So let's move one, poor, one more pair of electrons from nitrogen to carbon to make a trip. And at that point, we can see that each of the atoms now has an octet, except hydrogen, which is happy with two electrons. We also recheck to make sure that we have the correct number of electrons shown. A line corresponds to two dots, and we have a lone pair on the nitrogen atom, which gives us a total of 10 electrons, which is the correct total. And lastly, we'll draw a correct Lewis structure for an ion, in this case, a polyatomic ion, the carbonate ion with a minus 2 charge. If you correctly add up the valence electrons, remembering to add 2 to your total for the negative 2 charge in this ion, you should end up with a total of 24 valence electrons to account for. And the skeleton structure will have the carbon in the center and all three oxygens surrounding it and bonded to that central carbon atom. Make sure you show the minus two charge because this is an ion and, and those electrons are included in the, the dot structure as dot. We're going to place remaining electrons around the outer atoms to satisfy the octet rule for all three oxygen atoms. And that uses up all of our four electrons. Uh, in this case, then we need to do something similar to what we did in the last case. We need to move a lone pair of electrons on one of the oxygens and to make a double bond with carbon in order to achieve octets for all four of the atoms. And it makes no difference which oxygen you choose to move to make a ele move electrons to make a double bond. We've chosen the oxygen on the left in this case. And at that point, all of the atoms have set it. So double check your final Lewis structure for the correct electron count. And you see that we do have 24 electrons and that all four atoms satisfy the octet rule. And in this case, they do.